How many lovers have you made today? Chapter 6, Settling Thoughts. Luna stands beside Anon as they face Nightmare's door. The shadow that billowed forth has calmed to a lingering mist on the floor. She's plagued with thoughts of what Anon had asked of her. He doesn't understand the forces he's messing with. She will use you! Luna turns to face Anon, her expression devoid of emotion. This I know for certain. She's not a broken mare lost in her thoughts over how to improve herself. She's evil, a beast, nothing like what you think her to be. She's a toxin that burrows deep into your veins and corrupts your very actions. I cannot allow you to become a pawn to the likes of that disease. Her words are so sharp that he feels cut by them, as though, despite her intention, he was the target of her ire. However, he can't take her words at face value. Not with a sneaking suspicion that there's something Luna isn't telling him. The thought troubles him. He must know the full story, if he is to let this rest. I get it. Anon walks up to Luna, resting a hand on her cheek. You're afraid. Luna's solid stance goes slack at that. What is she gonna do to turn me against you? That's what you're thinking, right? Luna remains silent as Anon runs the length of her cheek to the back of her neck, gently coaxing her into an embrace. It's something I've thought about as well. Perhaps she'll use magic to erase my memory of you, or worse, just make me forget altogether. There's a tremble in his arms now. I can't say for sure what will happen, but I want to say one thing in Nightmare's defense. Anon gives Luna a moment to say anything, but her continued silence is enough to urge him forwards. She helped cure my nightmare. For no benefit. I'm sure we're both aware that she could have easily manipulated it to whatever she willed. However, that wasn't the case. I still remember the dream vividly. I was alone, everyone left me, and I couldn't take it. All by myself, in eternal darkness. Anon feels his grip on Luna tighten. I was surprised to find that you were there. You held me and told me it'd be alright, and I just had to wake up. The thing is... Anon moves back as Luna faces him with wide eyes. You were colder than usual. You also smelled of ozone. At first, I was confused, but then I recalled only one other pony smelled this way. It was confirmed when I touched her a few moments ago, the same coldness I felt before. Luna tenses, eyes wide. You have full right to think of her as evil. After hearing the horrible things she said and did to you, I don't think hate is a strong enough word to describe what you two feel for one another. However, something is amiss. And it's why I can't leave this be. She may very well be pure evil, but she's never treated me poorly. So I want to know more about you and her. So that I can draw my own conclusion and finally put this to rest. Luna cannot turn away from his eyes. There's so much care. And yet he wishes to waste it on the creature that corrupts her mind. Those memories are fuzzy for me. Luna admits. Like a flash of images. I know what happened, but something else is lost in their meaning. All I know is that I cannot trust her. Not after what she did to every pony. Luna leans in to nuzzle him. I will not allow her to hurt you. There is that familiar pain creeping across Anon's chest. He wants to do what's right, but he must also consider what is right for the sisters. He cares about him deeply. That's why he finds himself second-guessing if this is something he should go through with. His mood grows dark, as his thoughts run rampant. Nightmare is an entity that plagues Luna, and one that will remain with her for as long as Luna lives. One day, Anon will be gone, and he worries Nightmare will bide her time until that moment when Luna is left emotionally vulnerable to strike. Anon isn't one for the laissez-faire approach to life, so if he intervenes, there's a slim chance that he can salvage this. Maybe if he gets to know Nightmare, then someday he'll bring these two to an understanding. While that's one reason to take this monolithic task, it's not the entire reason either. When he worked on her, and their eyes met for a brief moment, he saw a vulnerable mare staring back at him. He questioned if it was a ruse, but deep down, he knows that look was far too genuine to fake. 
I know you don't want me to do this. Anon moves from Luna as she lands on all fours. It's hard to believe, but I can take care of myself. Though I will meet you halfway. If it helps, I'll tell you whenever I visit her. That way, you can check every so often to ensure I'm fine. Anon rubs the back of his neck. Of course, I'll need privacy too. I doubt she'll be open if you're around. Luna finds herself questioning how long Anon has thought about this. Anon, tell me again why you want to do this. Luna, if things were different and you were Nightmare, wouldn't you be lonely in that void? To be imprisoned there for what could very well be eternity. Luna starts at the insinuation. She was on the moon for a thousand years too. And even after that, she's still trapped by herself. Wouldn't that be unbearable? I... It's not the same. I don't know what else to say. Anon admits. I just can't pretend that I didn't sense her loneliness. Where will this end? Luna tests. What meaning does it have? I don't know yet, but it's something I will explore. Anon says with finality. What if it doesn't go well? Then I'll never see her again. I want the chance, that's all I'm asking. Luna closes her eyes as she takes this in. She already knows her answer. Very well. Every night, while you rest, I will give you an hour alone with her. You will be monitored by me to ensure your safety during this time. After that, I will train you in more advanced dream manipulation. If Nightmare is to attempt harming you, I want you to be able to defend yourself until I arrive. I can accept that. Anon smiles as he embraces Luna again. Thank you. I know I'm being demanding, but it's something I have to do. Luna rests her muzzle onto his shoulder. You've always been difficult, Anon. Though, I find it hard to tell you no when you're so adamant about it. We'll see how it goes. They move from one another as Anon thinks over the time. It's probably lunchtime. I'm sure my sister is waiting for you. Ease her mind and your own. Alright. See you later, Luna. Until we wake. Luna's roused by a knock upon her door. With a small grunt, she lifts herself from bed, making sure her connection to Nightmare is severed. There's a headache starting to take hold of her, and she doesn't want it to be exacerbated by her unwanted visitor. She knows it'll only be a matter of time until that disease harms Anon, and yet she cannot direct him from this fate. All she can do is ensure he's protected when that time comes. So, she'll allow him his freedom for the time being. Then, when the inevitable occurs and Nightmare reveals her hoof, he'll know what she asserts is the truth. Another round of knocks pierces her thoughts. One moment! Luna shouts, agitated. Her shoes touch the cold marble flooring with a soft clack. She takes one moment to smooth her fur before answering the door, only to find that standing a few hooves from her knights is none other than the young Drake. Yes? Luna addresses both Spike and her knights. Spike looks to say something, but a knight cuts in. The Drake has returned to seek further audience, Highness. Turning her attention back to the young Drake, she finds him looking unsure of himself. It's as if he's considering taking his leave as to not be a disturbance. My apologies, young Spike. Intimidating as they may be, my Lunar Knights are the most honorable and loyal knights in Equestria, bar none. There is no cause for fright. Luna says. Is there a reason you've come knocking on my chamber doors? Spike cautiously approaches the princess, keeping an eye on the two imposing guards despite Luna's assurance. I know we talked a little while ago, and I was wondering if I could ask another favor. Luna kneels low to meet Spike's reluctant gaze. Is that so? Well, I'm here, so what is it that you wish? Spike is starting to wonder if it was a bad idea coming here. However, knowing how important this task was, he stays his resolve, saying, I hope you don't mind, Princess, but I'd like to look over your library. Luna takes surprise in the demeanor shift from Spike. Where there was reluctance, there's now clarity. A smile on a scaly face, and a certain glint in his eye that spells determination. But she can't comprehend what this Drake has in mind. An amused smirk crosses her lips as she rises from her kneel and walks deeper into her room. 
Follow. As Spike enters, the door behind him closes and locks. The both of them stroll over to one of the large bookshelves that line the walls. There, they stop as Alona looks down at Spike. Explore this shelf freely. Lifting her wing, she brings it to another shelf that's covered in a shimmer. However, refrain from touching those books. Their arcane energy is unstable and could cause untold damage if mishandled. Should you grow curious, ask me, and we shall explore them together. Dude, thank God we got the internet, because without it, just imagine looking through books upon books just to find one thing. Anyway, let's get on to our intelligent donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Surreal Ryan, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Magic Record 09, Jock DF, Dark Side Raiden, Normals, Black Moon, Are Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sorber, The Remorge, Anomic Online, Ray, Rune Scythe 9A52, Will Chris, Monkey, Ross, Soul Shadow, Moon, Luigi, ADA, Chance, Request, Big Smoke 369, Bob Patch, EDF, Murder Princess, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.